Okay, we've got about 1.2 meters of paracord, piece of quite thin leather, um, anything would do really. You could use a, an oil cloth, tablecloth, I don't know, whatever, whatever material you can get hold of, but you know, leather looks good. This is a, I think this is a new bit, but it's been knocking around for a long time. And uh, what we're making, better discuss, discuss that, is a tinder pouch, much like this one, only smaller. This one was a 20 inch diameter piece of fabric or leather. So yeah, I'm going to go for a mm, 14 inch one, I think. So what do we need then? Well, apart from the leather and the paracord, we're going to need a knife, two pens or pencils, a ruler, hammer and a punch. Or we could use one of these hole punchy things Although I don't really like them much, I prefer I prefer the individual punch. But you know that's me. You can buy a set for just a few quid. Chinese usually, but you know they do the job. I, I like them better because you can. Uh, oh yeah, cutting mat. If you're using a punch, you'll need a, you'll need something to punch against. So I'm using a cutting mat, but a soft piece of wood or something like that. Because whatever the punch goes through is. You know, on the other side is what it's going to hit. So if you've got something hard, it's going to it's going to damage it, and if you've got something valuable, it's going to mark it. So that's why I'm using the cutting mat. Okay, so 14 inch diameter. Let's uh, let's presume that we're going to use the paracord. We've got the paracord pre-cut to I don't know, just over a meter. So put two loops in. Pass the second loop over the first loop. I'll come up closer. Two loops. Pass the second loop over the top of the first loop. Put the pen in. Pull it tight. We have a clove hitch. That's all we're doing really. And uh, we're looking for seven inches so Try and get your second loop in about the right place. Pull it tight, see what you got, and adjust. So yeah, pull one in, pull the other one. So yeah, we've got seven and a quarter at the moment. So oh, still seven and a quarter. getting closer now. Seven, there we go. Nearest dam seven. So if you keep the lines up near the nibs where you're going to mark then there's less chance for tipping which will alter significantly the diameter of the circle. So you want to keep your pens upright when you're doing it. Okay, let's mark out a circle. See, obviously we want a economics of material, so we want it to see where see where it will fit in. All right, that looks about it. So Gonna switch hands. Make sure you keep the the center one in place. It's amazing how much it varies, actually, just by tipping it a little bit. And we want to mark the center as well. Just put a little cross there. Right. Now we're going to come in an inch. So we're looking for a six inch diameter now. 
so keep it all going that way. Push one of the one of the lines in. What you think is about an inch, and uh, see what you got. It's not critical. Oh, I've got maybe sixty. So that's what one fifty. I got about one fifty three, which is about a millimeter over six inches. So yeah, that's close enough. So we'll draw another circle inside the first one. Pull the pens out and there's no knots left in it in the power cord. Right, so we cut that out with a pair of scissors, which I forgot to mention. Yes, you're going to need a pair of scissors. So we'll cut that out. To the outside line, that is. bit wonky is fine. Sharp scissors help greatly. Right, save the offcuts. Obviously tiny little bits at much use. Like that and that bit on the end there. But yeah, that bit, that's a nice nice bit so that's worth saving. With the offcuts, we can practice if, let's say, if we if we had a line here and here, and we wanted to put a hole on that cross, if we were to fold it on one of those lines, we can still see the other line there and we could use the standing knife to put two cuts through both bits of material which would give us some kind of hole not as neat as a punch but if you haven't got a punch you can still make one of these pouches don't let it stop you they're easy to make, very quick. So yeah, get practicing. Make the first one with a knife, and if you like doing it, then go out and buy a punch, or a you know a plier punch, whatever you call them. You know, leather leather punch, leather punch things. Okay, now for the rest of them, I'm going to use a a punch and a hammer. So I think that's the nicest way to do it. Right, what we want is to mark out the holes one inch apart. Now what have we got? If you look around, what have you, then I've got a metal ruler here which is inch and a sixteenth. That is mm, 27, 28 mil. Can't see without my glasses on. That's going to be close enough. So, from the centre line, I'm going to put my marks in, move it round, one, mark it out like that. And what you're looking for is an even number of holes. So, you don't have to start counting to begin with, but wait until you get three quarters of the way round and then you can start altering the spacing on the last little bit. Uh, but you're, you know, the first, the first bit of cord 
is going to go in through a hole, it's going to come round and come out again. So every two holes the cord is going to be going in and coming out, which is what we want on this pouch. So even number of holes. And we're marking it on the inside all the time, so you're not going to see any of this. So I'll come back to you when I've finished marking this out and uh, start punching the holes. Thirty-two. Right, now that should work. Where these holes are a little bit smaller, we're just going to put a couple of marks there in the middle of those smaller holes so we know that they're the, they're the side that where the drawstring is going to go. Okay, now punch out the holes. We've got our two little dots which are in the centre of the holes that are just slightly smaller together. So that's where we're going to start. Feeding our line through. straightforward just to in out in out don't hook it round anything so there we go we've got we finish up with the they're both coming out, so that's an even amount of holes. Yeah, see that? Right, now what we want ideally is a scrap piece of leather, and we're just going to mark out two holes that line up. with that put the center on there and uh, yeah just a very rough bit of work but cut that out with a knife with a penny or a tuppence, just take the corners off. Just some very basic leather work. Give it a little sand.
two holes in it with the punch. And I'm going to use a little beveler to go around and just take these corners off on both sides just to tidy it up a bit but it's a you know you don't you don't really have to do this at all this is just if you happen to have one All it does is makes it a little bit tidier. Give that a final little sand. And we're going to put some slava on the edge and roll it with this little roller thing. Again, not a critical if you haven't got it, doesn't make any difference at all really, it's just just makes it look that little bit neater. For your first one, you know, you could even do without this piece. It won't really matter much. But you know everyone's got a little piece of leather, a little bit of thicker leather, old belt, something like that. You know, if you go to the charity shop and look for old coat, old leather coats and belts and sofas, you know, you'll soon pick up a, a little, uh, a little stockpile of leather goods, leather, leather material that you can make things from. I'll be covering different types of pages in the future, so yeah, start looking now. Right, that's just rounded the edge off a little bit. What we're going to do now is put a little bit of, uh, I call it boot butter, but I'll do a video showing you the recipe of this at some stage. But it's just a leather conditioning wax really. It's made out of beeswax and I don't know, I can't remember what else is in it without looking it up. So that just tidies it up a little bit. Put a bit on the on the leather as well, and that will soften it up a bit and keep it well well conditioned. So you can redo this every now and again. And you can also put onto the wax onto the cord and onto this the outside of the of this piece of leather as well using this stuff and that will keep it nice and waterproof and flexible without cracking so that's you know part of part of leather goods maintenance really so we thread this on piece of fat wood that I drilled a hole in so I'm going to use that it's a, I shall tidy it up a bit first actually it's a bit it's a bit skanky isn't it let's have a look what can we do with it Save the Oscuts for uh, 
they can be the first components to go into our tinder pouch yeah, and just tidy this up a bit Yet the this back end just put a chamfer on there. Right, that's a very rough toggle, but the thing is, it's a piece of fatwood. So, as well as carrying fire lighting materials on the inside of the pouch, part of what the pouch is made of is fire lighting materials as well. So, if we thread that. through the holes the hole needs to be just sort of tight enough to hold it really this one may be slightly too big but it doesn't matter you know you can uh, make the next one smaller and we start to pull it up these uh, pieces in the pouch along with the shavings little handy little fire starting stuff put a figure eight on the end of this I like to use a figure eight because it's easier to undo Should be able to go round and fit onto the pouch like that, and that makes it nice and secure. And what we've got is we'll, we'll cover what to put in this pouch in a, in, the, in this series. But what we've got is we've got a piece of paracord long enough for a fire boat. We've got a piece of fatwood we can use to light a fire with, which is our toggle. And we've got our piece of leather which we can open out to do our fire prep on without being on the floor. So, and also to carry some uh, some emergency fire lighting equipment and and nicks and knacks. So yeah, lovely. So that is a 14 inch one compared to a 20 inch one. So you can see, you know, quite a significant size difference. So I think 14 inches probably perfect for carrying around in your rucksack. As a as a firelighting start firelighting equipment pack. Okay.